What's up everybody, this is Adrian, the web scraping guy, and today we are going to be scraping Zillow. The long awaited video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. Um, it's not, not too bad at all. They don't have a lot of security on it. Um, the way I'm gonna show you, I do need to update it every once in a while, like I would say every three to six months or something. They'll do an update where they just change like the hash, the hash ID on the property details endpoint, but easy, like five minute fix. So let's get into it. So let's say we want to scrape properties in Austin. We're going to right click inspect. And then I can't help but look at some of these places like, wow, wow, one day, one day. Okay, focus. So our network tab, clear the console, and then we're gonna paginate to see the endpoint. Boom, boom. Async, create search page state. And you can see, so you can see the payload here. You have, yes, user search term Austin, Texas. And then in the preview, we have like cat one search results, and then you have list results right here. And that looks like it's it. So let's copy that as node fetch. And come over here and just call it. So we're gonna const res equals await fetch. And you need, you just paste that in there. And you need import uh, fetch or node fetch installed. So you npm install node fetch and then just import like that. And then you can actually get rid of the cookie, which you can in most instances. Then you need a user agent. And for some reason, Copilot never gives me the right one. So we have to come over here and manually copy and paste, which is super annoying. So boom. And let us log the JSON, see if that works. So node demo.js. Boom, but now we need to see if it works with a proxy. So let's do agent, get proxy agent. Let's see if that works. Hey, -o. it does. And this uh, is a function that I have. I have a video about how to use proxies and a video about this function specifically. So just uh, look at that video to see how to do that. Um, let's log this actually so that's all correct blah 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 and i'm not gonna uh do this right now but like i'm not gonna uh maybe i will show it like you so you need the body if you want to change like what to send to it so you need to change like the payload so thankfully um copilot is gonna do all of this for us thank goodness Ba, 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 ba. I think that's it. Oh, so then we just need to, I believe, just say, yeah, JSON stringify copilot is so nice for these things. Um, yeah, I didn't get something correct. Yeah, I think it didn't get the once. Oh, maybe because I just didn't continue right there. Yeah, boom. Is that it? Okay. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, I think that's it. So then if we JSON stringify body. Boom. So that makes it a little bit easier to pass in what you want. And you're going to need like region ID to search for different regions and how to get that is pretty easy. You just come up here, let's clear everything. Man, so many requests. And let's say Canton. So then boom, that's how you get, you just do the same thing, copy as node fetch with uh, that endpoint. And yeah, so you just need to change the query, the queue there. Because the results, um, we actually want Canton, Ohio. We'll have the region ID right there. Oh, so that's what you need to put there. And then region type is like, I think city is six and county is four or something like that. But uh, yeah, you guys will be able to figure that out. 
and then I think for more results because the the map so the uh, let's see let's do this again Austin Texas and let me show you so the list results here are only going to return 40 each so you have to paginate to get uh, a max of like 800 I think they return but if you do the map results then they return 500 so if we try this again we're gonna zoom in and that async one is what we need then if you look at cat one search results yeah, so you'll see 500 here for the map results, and then list results are 40, and then you have to paginate. So it might be worth it to get uh, the map results. And then I believe if you zoom in to like this, then you look at all those that came up. So I think you get a lot of results that way. Mm, async here we go that's way easier let's see for the category total the cat one search results map results oh there's like nothing list results huh well maybe that's not experiment with that check it out uh, i thought you could get results context anyway whatever that's how you get the search results uh pretty easy so now Let us get an individual result here. So say you want to get the uh, individual property, you're gonna click on it and then boom, we have this GraphQL thing here and you know that it's the endpoint because you have this property uh, key and then look at all this information. They return a lot of information, too much information. So then you're gonna do the same thing. Copy is node fetch. And then let's just say const res one equals await and then paste. Get rid of the cookie. And then we want the same user agent. And it still doesn't work, which is so infuriating. And da, 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 we're gonna try this without a user agent or without a proxy at first. And let's just get rid of this. Boom. So that looks like it worked. Let's check it out. Yeah, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Yep. So let's try it with a proxy. And I think that worked. Sweet. Yeah, so like I said, pretty easy. Now if you want to change uh, like what property you're getting, then you need to change the ZPID. So the ZPID for this one is this number. So what we're going to do is copy, get all instances of it, and then interpolate uh, ZPID, which I haven't even defined yet. So let's do ZPID. And try that again, please work, yes. So then you just take the ZPID of any property. Oh, is that? Whoa, that's just sequential. I didn't think they did that. That's crazy. So that would make it really easy to guess. So let's say you wanna get all of, <laughs> if you wanna scrape all of Zillow's properties. Like, what if we did uh, 10? Oh, that's not good. Then that makes it way easy to scrape everything because it's it's not like unique. It's just linear. So you just in, increment and dec uh, decrement to get all of the properties. Yeah. So that one doesn't exist. That's really interesting. Uh, but let's see the ZPID. Yeah, these ZPIDs, I think they changed them from what they were before. That's so easy. Interesting. Boom, 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 boom. And I will 
log, uh, put this in a file so we can see what is there. Test.json. Yeah, look at all the information that is here. Address, bedrooms, bath, price, year built, blah, 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 blah. blah. Tons of stuff. Look at look at this file. Look at this file. Insane how how much information is here. But yeah, that's it. So obviously to get all of the listings then, then you just need to fetch the search results, paginate or search for different areas. And then it's going to return the ZPIDs in the search results. And then you just fetch each ZPID and that's it. And the thing that changes that I was mentioning earlier is this. Uh, so if we view parse decoded, this hash will change from time to time, but all you have to do is just come in here and see the new one that they use and then just copy and paste it. That's it. So that's how you scrape Zillow. And subscribe for more scraping tutorials and tips. Peace.